<laughs> Hello, hopefully this video is how to fix a leaking hydraulic cylinder. I've never actually done this before, um, but I've done a fair bit of research. It looks pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to give it a go. So the first thing I've done is I've purchased a hydraulic seal kit. So this excavator is a Komatsu PC-12R. It's, um, it's quite a small machine, um, but the principles for hydraulic cylinders, this is a double actuating high cylinder, uh, double, double actuating hydraulic cylinder, meaning it pushes in and pulls back out. Uh, so there's the two pipes connecting to it. Um, the, the point is these cylinders are all fairly similar depending whether it's a tractor, uh, whether it's a forklift, uh, excavator, the size varies a lot. Um, but this is, uh, this is it. So hopefully this video is not called Man Ruins Excavator or uh, something along those lines. So anyway, this is a, my, my go at uh, changing this over and um, follow along and I'll share what, what works, what doesn't work, what I do differently next time. This gives you a bit of an idea of how much it's leaking. Initially it was just weeping a little bit and I uh, continued to use it and then uh, a lot of hours later suddenly it's just turned into a proper leak. So. Yeah, time to change that out, I think. Well, so far so good. Um, what I've done is I've moved it over to the container over here to the workshop and I've propped the front arm so that it's all standing upright and it's sort of supporting itself so there wasn't a whole lot of pressure on this hydraulic ram. Um, and then I have um, undone the, the main two fittings. Um, so this end is was over the top there, obviously. Um, so this is the cap end um, fitting and this is the rod end fitting um, obviously here's the rod and basically how this works is when you put the pressure puts fluid on this side of the of the piston travels out when it puts uh, fluid in here it, it retracts back the other way so um, what I'm going to do next is uh, undo uh, this this part here I'm going to use a set of Stilson's I've unbolted the, the fittings uh, and then I've taken the whole cylinder off and I've put it in uh, back the other way, like back to front if you like. So, uh, you know, this part here was here. So I've, I've swapped it over and then I used my uh, Stilson down here, these grips uh, and this long tube as a, as a, like a breaker bar. And I've, um, yeah, managed to get this part um, I guess this uh, rod end uh, out and these are the seals that are failing in here there's like a, a wicker uh, type type one that gets all the dirt off and then there's the actual seals uh, in internally here then and uh, yeah that's what I've got to replace but I'm gonna have a go at taking the whole what I've got here I want to see how hard it is to dismantle the whole thing and just check the internal seals because obviously you don't want uh, any internal leaks because that'll give you less force um, so I thought this was going to be a bit easier to, to pull out. Um, it's quite stubborn. So I'm probably just going to get a ratchet strap or something and um, yeah, just give it a little pull. This is the main uh, rod uh, from the hydraulic cylinder and this part still on here um, it was a little bit difficult to pull that out of there I just used the ratchet strap hooked to the, to the vise there I mean it didn't didn't really require that much force 
I, you know, but that was just easier than pulling on it. Um, so I think next what I need to do is remove this uh, nut off this end, which I believe, I haven't actually had a go at it yet, but I think that'll be pretty, pretty torqued on there, um, quite tight. So I think my first go at this, I could just put it in the vise, but I think I'm gonna just use, keep going with what's working, swap it around and put it in the, um, the front of the excavator like this was, and uh, take, take that apart. You can actually see in here now, Close enough so that you can see that's where the this uh, the wicker part of the seal has pushed through the wicker. I think um, I'm not sure if I'm using all the right terminology, but um, yeah, you can see that's why that was leaking quite badly. The rest of these seals do look in just fine condition, so I'll see how everything goes. Um, I've got the whole kit, uh, but it like everything, just see how um, how difficult it is to swap this out. Yep, so as expected, that was this nut was very tight. So what I have is this laid out. I still have the actual um, rod on the machine here, just because I guess that's where I'll have to reassemble it um, anyway. So yeah, you got this all kind of makes starting to make sense now. Um, seals in here, vice versa. All the different seals. This is the uh, the order it sort of came off so this is the main piston here the nut was here um, so yeah now I'll just uh, get my seal kit which is here and try and work out which ones are which and swap them over this little snap ring here has been by far the worst it's been pretty hard to get this out but I think I finally got it I've just uh, Actually, I don't know if I'm going to pay for the price for this later. I've punched this part, piece down, which is, I think, one of the bits of seal that I'm replacing. At least I hope that's what it is. Push that down, and then I've managed to get a very fine screwdriver. And this one I sort of grind, ground down and lever this up. So I kind of imagined this was going to be more like a circlip where you had your uh, little, you know, your, your pliers around the other way and you grabbed a hold of this and just pulled this out fairly easily. Um, as it turns out, it's like a blind um, snap ring, I think it's called. Um, and yeah, I've managed to get that out. Um, but yeah, that's taken a fair bit of reading that I wasn't planning and a fair bit of uh, searching on the internet uh, to get that because that was a bit of a hurdle. But anyway, um, looks like I've got past that. So see what comes next. basically removed all the seals out of here. I'm gonna give this a good clean. Um, I haven't taken this O-ring off yet, but I uh, just, uh, I think that's easy to take off on the outside there. In here, um, I've just got the main seal and there's an actual way that this goes around um, that sits right in here. And then um, after that, I've got this main like wicker seal. This is the old one that I took out and the bit of uh, metal casing was broken. So I've got the new, new one of those just here. Um, so that's nice and nice and easy and then this little bugger goes back in. I think he'll be a lot easier to put back in. Well, I have actually got all those seals uh, exchanged over. The ones here on the piston were quite easy to do. They all are uh, just, you know, a case of prying them off and uh, they've got little grooves and that was all pretty straightforward. 
Um, I was using a metal screwdriver to begin with, which I think was a pretty bad idea given that we don't want to score or damage anything. In the end, I used a um, just the back end of this plastic biro, so something nice and soft. Uh, it's definitely something I would sort of think about a bit more next time that I do it. Um, this was definitely the hardest bit, um, drifting in this top seal. If you had something to drift this in with, that would be a lot better. And in the manual, it definitely talks about pulling all this apart and uh, having a hydraulic press, which I don't have to uh, put all that back together again. So I'm still nervous. I haven't really quite got this as good as it could be. However, when you look at these seals compared to what came out in pieces, you'd think that was almost working and this looks a hell of a lot better. Snap ring went back in just fine. Um, and this one, I sort of had to crunch it up almost and put it back in, which is again in the manual, it sort of says to pull all this out. Um, I'm not sure exactly how you get it out. It doesn't tell you how to get it out, but it says to press it all back in, um, which I haven't done. So I sort of squished the seal, put them in, a bit fiddly. Um, I hope it works. Um, if not, this hasn't been too expensive because uh, you know it wasn't working previously. What well, was working it just was leaking previously. I think the seal kit cost me about fifty dollars. So worst case scenario, if this all is no better, I'll be able to take this ram off again and uh, take it to a hydraulic shop, get them to do it, or maybe I'll buy a, a press or I'll do some more research. But for now, um, yeah, I feel like I'm learning a lot, so that's good. Yeah, so now I've just got to reassemble it. I've still got the uh, shaft out here. Yep, so this is all coming along quite well. I've got this, um, just feels so much better. It's uh, really uh, just gone on, it took a bit of force to get it on, but the second it went on, you could just feel that's gonna work and it was wicking the oil, pushing it back along this side. So that's really good. Um, I torqued down the nut, which you can't see at the moment, but um, I used the same breaker bar and um, my shifter, which is a bit agricultural, I know, but hey, we are on a farm, so I guess that's okay. And um, yeah, I've just pushed this, um, this the barrel, I suppose, on, and then uh, just started to seat up, and I gave it a few little taps with the um, rubber mallet on the end, and yeah, just went straight on. So let's hope this kind of luck continues. In the description, I'm going to add some links to a few videos that have really helped me. In particular, Jim Pytel has made a series of videos. They're more like lectures um, on hydraulic or fluid powered systems. I don't have anything to do with Jim, but these videos have really helped me a lot. So I'd recommend watching them if you're interested in this sort of thing. So I've got all this fitted back up. I've got this all greased, um, got the hydraulic fittings in. Um, so next thing is to fire it up and see whether or not I need to bleed it. The book says it's self-bleeding, but there is a scenario where you have to bleed it according to the workshop manual, which is a bit average.
Leute. Bit of a recap on uh, changing out the, the seals on the um, arm. Basically, as you know, as you've just seen in the video, it was it was leaking pretty badly, and I've changed it out. Things I'd do differently. I definitely uh, make a bit more of an effort to, um, to, to to not make such a mess. Like I uh, lost a fair bit of hydraulic fluid. I get some more buckets and some more rags generally to, um, to, to help sort that out. Um, I would probably also um, not use a screwdriver and um, use some more softer things to, to push the seals in and out. Um, and also I'd, I'd put a bit more effort into getting something to uh, drift the seals in better. Um, in the workshop manual it says to uh, use press and have all the things like um, I haven't got any of that stuff so if you had had uh, hydraulic presses that would that would certainly help but it's definitely uh, I think I've proven that it's possible uh, with some pretty basic tools like uh, didn't have anything too outrageous to change the seal and um, yeah as you can see it's it's just digging just fine um, I've since since uh, that I've probably done about four hours digging I think um, with it and I've topped up the hydraulic fluid once um, since doing it I didn't actually have to bleed the system for air at all um, which was good uh, so yeah that's that hasn't been been a trouble either way um, I think it's all been pretty much a success um, thanks a lot for watching hope this video has been helpful in some sort of way if you like this sort of video um, let us know in the comments and uh, subscribe and all that sort of stuff um, but yeah thanks a lot for watching